Hi there! Have you ever flown a kite? It is such good fun once the wind cooperates and you get this thing airborne. Welcome to JSC Mathematics. Yes, maths is fun. And in today's lesson, we'll learn the formulae of how to calculate the area and perimeter of a kite. So, after watching this lesson, you may or may not be able to make or fly a kite, but at least be able to derive the formulae for working out the area and perimeter of a kite and to apply those formulae in calculating the area and perimeter. not playing. Mom now thinks we are geniuses since we did so good in our maths project and I quite like being thought of as a genius. You know Sally, if we learn about kites in maths but can make one happen for real, then I wouldn't be interested. Ben is right Sally, maths has to be applicable to real life, otherwise what's the use of it? Tell us what you're doing Ben. I'm making a kite. Come, I'll show you. I'm going to fold this piece of paper into a real kite. And you and I are going to fly it right here, if the wind will play along. That sounds great. Okay, but take your drinks, okay? Okay. Thanks, you too. Viewers, in geometry, a kite is a quadrilateral. We saw in our previous lesson that this means it has four sides and four vertices, or corners. However, a kite is totally different from the other quadrilaterals because it does not have any parallel sides. A kite is a flat shape with two pairs of equal adjacent sides, meaning the sides next to each other are the same length. There are two short sides and two long sides. A kite can also be described as a quadrilateral with one line of symmetry along one of its diagonals. We can see this, right? It is possible to draw a line straight through a kite so that the left side will be identical to the right side. To sum up, we can say that a kite has two pairs of sides and each pair is made up of adjacent and touching sides that are the same length one pair of opposite angles are equal. The diagonals, the dashed lines you see here, cross at right angles and one of the diagonals cuts the other exactly in half. A little later we will discuss the area and perimeter of a kite. I saw on the internet how to make a kite. Here we're going to use this piece of paper. I hope it will be strong enough. And then we'll need all these. A wooden skewer. They say you can also use a drinking straw. A kite string or fishing line. A white ribbon like surveyor's tape. Scissors or a hole punch. And cello tape. We start by folding this piece of paper. This A4 page in half. Then with this quirky, I have to mark a point at the top of the paper about two centimeters from the fold. 
there and mark on the bottom of the paper about two centimeters from the open side. There I connect the two points with a dotted line. Next, I fold the half page along the dotted line. Then flip the paper over and fold the other side in the same way along the dotted line. We flip the paper back over so that the two folded sides face away from each other and we tape along the middle seam. Lay a skewer across the kite and tape it into place. Oh, it's beginning to look like a kite now. We might have to cut the skewer down to size with the scissors if it's sticking out over the kite's edge. Now, we just flip the kite back over and straighten the spine, this middle line. Hey, I've made a kite! Yay, let's fly it! Come this way. Okay. Sally, let's fly this. Wow, it's flying! A kite! And it flies! Well done, you two! Well done, Ben! Now, I think you both had enough fun. And it's time for the math spot. Come inside, then. Yes, I want... I want 80% from both of you tomorrow. And for this part. Yes, Hmm, let me see. According to these instructions, we're supposed to draw a rectangle first with these dimensions. Length 8 cm and breadth 3 cm. Okay, here is the rectangle. 8 cm in length and 3 cm in breadth. Here's the ruler. Thanks. I measure 8 cm and draw the line. Then I measure a 90 degree angle and draw down the line of 3 cm. Number the blocks so we can find the area of the rectangle. Okay, I'll do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are twenty four. Okay, so that was easy. And applying the formula for the area of a rectangle, length times breadth, we multiply. 3 times 8 and also get 24 centimeter squared. Now for the exciting part, we have to draw a kite. Okay, you do that and I'll read the instructions. Good teamwork. Okay, shoot. You draw the kite inside the rectangle. The long diagonal must be 8 centimeters long. That's the so-called spine. The middle line of the kite from top to bottom. And the short diagonal, the line from side to side, must be 3 cm, but not across the middle this time. Okay. I make a straight line down the middle, which is 8 cm long. This one is diagonal. And from side, to side three blocks down this is the short diagonal 
Now I connect the dots from the top to the two short diagonal points and from there to the point at the bottom where they connect. That looks good. Now we have to find a way to work out the area of this kite. It's going to be difficult to count the blocks because the lines go through some of them. Yes, I see. Hmm, what to do, what to do. Hey, remember what we did yesterday? How about if we cut up the kite into triangles and glue the triangles together to form a rectangle with them? Then we can count the blocks to find the area. Sounds like a plan. Let's cut it up. We'll mark the triangles one and two at the top and three and four here at the bottom. And first we cut out triangles one and three which have different sizes. Yes, and now we should find a place on the other half of the kite where we can form a rectangle with these two. Oh look Sally! If I take triangle one and flip it over and move it into this space next to triangle two, we have a rectangle. Okay, do it. Yes, that works. Then I take triangle three and flip it over and fit it next to triangle four here in this space. So we have another rectangle formed here. Good. Do you see what I see? You mean that the total area of the new rectangle is half of the area of the original rectangle? Exactly. So we can say the area of the kite is half of the area of the rectangle. Mm, yes, but we cannot say a half times length times breadth because the kite doesn't have a length and a breadth. No, you're right. It hasn't. But instead of using length and breadth, we can use the long diagonal and the short diagonal. Good plan. The diagonals have the same dimensions as the original rectangle. So we can conclude that the area of a kite is half times diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. Yes. Now let's do an example to find the area of a kite. The example says, calculate the area of a kite if the diagonals are 4.3 and 9.6 centimeters respectively. That's easy. We know now because we have worked it out that the area of a kite is a half times the long diagonal times the short diagonal, right? So it's quite simple. Half times 4.3 times 9.6 is... I'll have to check on the calculator. It comes to 20.64. Don't forget the unit. Ah, yes. The unit of area is centimeter squared. Now we just have to find a formula for the perimeter. And to do that, we must first look at the properties of the kite. It would help us find a formula for the perimeter. I know what you mean. Okay, we have two short sides and two long sides. The short sides are equal and so are the long sides. So we have two short sides of the same length and two long sides of the same length. Exactly. And so we can deduce that the perimeter, which is the outline or outer border of the kite, is the distance all around the kite. So we just add the four sides together. The two short sides are equal and the two long sides are equal. We can therefore write a formula which says the perimeter of a kite is equal to the length of the two short sides 
plus the two long sides. Perimeter equals two times the short side plus two times the long side. That's the formula. Good. Let's do an example. Here is one. Measure the sides and find the perimeter. I'll measure them. The short side is 3.4 centimeters. And uh, the long side is 5.2 centimeters. If we apply the formula for the perimeter of a kite, that is 2 times the short side plus 2 times the long side. Then we have to add up 2 times 3.4 and 2 times 5.2 centimeters. Does this seem correct to you? I get 17.2 centimeters, of course. You know what, Ben? I think we're done. Really? The afternoon has flown by. Do you think your mom is going to stick us for an ice cream again today? I don't think so. I have a lot of physics homework today. Ah, oh, I almost forgot. Me too. See you at school tomorrow then. Yes, and thanks Ben. It's fun doing maths with you. Bye. 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 Viewers, this concludes our lesson two. I hope you learned something too. Let's recap. By cutting the kite into triangles, it is possible to determine that the area of a kite is half the area of a rectangle with the same dimensions. This is because the length of the rectangle compares with the long diagonal of the kite and the breadth compares with the short diagonal. So the formula they derive from this is that the area of a kite is half of diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. Another way to state this is diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 divided by 2. The perimeter is the distance around the sides. The perimeter is found by adding the lengths of the four sides together, but we can also use the following formula. Perimeter equals 2 multiplied by short sides plus 2 multiplied by long sides. Because the two short sides are equal, and so are the two long sides. This ends our lesson. Please also participate in our SMS competition. The key word for today's program is kite. SMS your answer to the number 5003. Write the keyword kite with only the correct letter for the answer you choose. The question is, what is the formula to calculate the perimeter of a kite? Is it A. Half times diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 or B. Half times length times breadth or C. 2 times short side plus 2 times long side. Let us know and we'll reward some winners with a prize. Next time, we will discuss the area and perimeter of the trapezium. I'll see you then. Goodbye.